Hello, in this video, I'm going to explain how to solve free fall math problems. Uh, first off, the content and language objectives. Content objective is I can solve free fall math problems. Uh, language objective is I can write about important differences between free fall and kinematics physics problems. Uh, first off, free fall overview. If you haven't already watched a video on kinematics and how to solve kinematics problems, I would suggest going back and watching this first. Uh, this is kind of a follow up video uh, for free fall. Kinematics deals with X direction movement. Free fall involves Y direction movement, anything moving up and down. Uh, so kinematics versus free fall in terms of these equations and what we're looking at, this is why I'd recommend uh, taking a look at the kinematics video first. The equations you'll notice are exactly the same. The only difference between the ones on the left, the free fall equations and the ones on the right, I uh, involve the use of X or Y. Uh, otherwise they're exactly the same. Some things that you do need to watch out for for free fall versus kinematics problems, though. Uh, first of all, it seems like with free fall problems, there are more negative values. Uh, oftentimes, things end up below where they started. Uh, things are falling. There's acceleration uh, down. Uh, movement is speeding up towards the ground. And so you have lots of negative values that need, you need to keep track of. Uh, second of all, acceleration is often assumed because we have objects that are falling on Earth with acceleration due to gravity that's negative 9.8 meters per second per second. Uh, third of all, there are oftentimes clues in problems. It doesn't explicitly give you a number, uh, but you can read between the lines and try to uh, solve problems using information that's not stated directly. So a couple of examples of that, clues in free fall problems. If an object is dropped, just like this ball is about to be dropped off the cliff, uh, what you know is that your velocity initial is zero because at the start of this scenario, uh, nothing is moving. The ball is not moving. Its starting velocity is zero. Another thing uh, it'll say sometimes is at the top of its path. Uh, and so if this girl throws a ball up in the air, at the top of that path, uh, the velocity final for this scenario uh, would be zero meters per second. Uh, because an object, as it's traveling up, it has a positive velocity. As it's traveling down, it has a negative velocity. Right at that peak, though, the velocity is zero meters per second. Just a third clue is sometimes something will return to its starting position. Uh, if you throw an object up in the air and then it comes back down and lands in your hand, uh, whatever your initial velocity is positive, uh, your final velocity would be negative. Uh, so they're gonna be equal and opposite. Uh, so there's just one problem I wanted to go through uh, to demonstrate some of these things and just to go through the math. Uh, it says here an object is dropped from a 15 meter ledge. How fast is it moving just before it hits the ground? Uh, the answer whenever, uh, right before something hits the ground, the answer should not be zero for a final velocity if something's dropping. So it's that instant before an object hits the ground. Uh, first off, just like the kinematics problems, what I'd recommend is just go through and identify these different variables uh, and what you're given in a problem. Uh, first, we can assume in this problem, this is on Earth, that our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second, uh, per second that I'm missing there. Uh, you can also use negative 10 as far as I'm concerned. Uh, 10 amongst friends is, is what I remember learning in college. Uh, 15 meter ledge. So an object's being dropped off a 15 meter ledge. You start at ledge level and then it's moving down. So your displacement, your delta Y, uh, would be negative 15 meters. Uh, your velocity initial, if an object is dropped, that means your velocity initial is zero meters per second. Again, it doesn't say it, uh, but it can be assumed. And then how fast is it moving just before it hits the ground? What you're asked to solve for then is velocity final. Uh, what that means is you're not using time. Uh, and so time is not found in the bottom equation shown on the bottom right of this page. And so we're going to use the equation uh, listed there. Vf squared is equal to Vi squared uh, plus 2a delta y. Uh, so here's the equation. Now it's just a matter of taking the values that we're given and plugging them in. Uh, Vf squared is uh, what we're looking for is equal to zero squared plus two uh, times negative 9.8 times negative 15. I'm going to take care of everything in the parentheses first uh, and then zero squared is just zero. Uh, so velocity squared, uh, velocity final squared is equal to 294, uh, meaning your velocity final could be plus or minus 17 meters per second. Uh, since it's moving down, your answer to this problem would be negative 17 meters per second. Uh, that's the end of this video, providing an overview, some example problems for free fall uh, math physics problems. If you have any questions or if you need any help, please stop by during homework help hours or any period 1A. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day.